Hello, I'm Marcus Dodsworth from Shenton Group. I'd like to talk to you briefly in this video about something called G59. Stay with me, it's not as boring as it sounds. G59 is essentially one part of a series of regulations covering the use of generators or combined heat and power units in parallel with the mains, sometimes known as being in sync or in synchronisation with the mains. Um, you may not understand those terms, so I'll briefly describe what they are. Running in parallel with the mains simply means that electricity coming into your building from the transformers out in the street, the public power supply, and electricity coming into your building from your generator or CHP, combined heat and power unit. So this electricity comes in, the frequency and the voltage are exactly the same, so the electrical loads within the building have no idea they're being fed actually from two separate power supplies. And these power supplies are synchronised, so they're running together. Now, there is a safety risk associated with this. Let me describe a scenario where your power cable coming into your building, which is perhaps buried in the street, is broken for some reason. Maybe a construction company has put a digger bucket through it, for some reason it's been damaged. So you have a power cut, you report that to the local electrical operator, it's known as the DNO, the district network operator. They will come along, make your building safe to work on to fix the power cut, which they do by going to the nearest substation, or transformer out in the local area. They isolate that cable to make it safe to work on. Now, if you've been following the narrative so far, you might spot what's coming next. Let us suppose that while this repair work is underway, your CHP or generator in your building begins to run. At this point, it's possible for power from your generator to be back fed, back down the cable, out of your building, into the street, and could obviously seriously injure or even kill the person working on the broken cable. Therefore, these regulations are very important. That's one of the things which they do. It's probably the most important. So, if you would like to have a CHP or a generator in your building running in parallel with the mains, you must comply with the G59 regulations, so called. There is a process of applying for permission to have your G59 installation, and there is certain devices involved. I'll show you how it works. Here we have a CHP from our range, and inside the right-hand section of the control panel, at the top, here you will see something called the G59 mains protection relay. This device is looking at the mains and measuring various parameters, voltage, frequency, a variety of other parameters. Should it detect anything going wrong outside of those parameters, it instantly opens a safety breaker, here it is in the power section of the machine, which will disconnect the CHP from the grid immediately. So there's no risk of backfeeding the cable. That practically is how it actually does its job. G59 has a number of myths associated with it. I'll cover two or three of those very briefly because they're very important for you to understand them as they can have a detrimental impact on your project. The first one is that G59 permission is only required if we intend to export power out of the building back onto the national grid and sell it. This is a myth. You must have the G59 approval and the safety devices in place irrespective of whether you're intentionally exporting or not for the reasons which we previously described. The second myth is that the authorities, electrical authorities who manage this whole G59 concept are obliged to give you permission. There's many government incentives towards using combined heat and power and it's something which is increasing in the market. So you would assume that they automatically have to give you permission. This is not necessarily true. So you could have a situation where you've bought your beautiful CHP engine, it's installed in the basement of your building, all ready to go. You're moving towards commissioning the project and handing it over to the client. And then we find there's no G59 permission. That means we can't even commission the engine. It wouldn't be possible to even run it without this safety permission being in place. So it's essential to get that permission as soon as you possibly can. The district network operator is allowed to take many, many weeks to review your application and decide whether you have permission or not. It is rare for permission to be totally declined, but it can come back with conditions attached. For example, 
if there were some issues in the network in the local neighbourhood, they might say they want something like neutral voltage displacement equipment on the transformer. This can cost many thousands of pounds and the question is who's going to pay for it? It probably wasn't in your budget, your client doesn't want to pay, it can cause an issue. All of this can be avoided by getting the G59 permission early on in the project. Get started, get it done, find out if it's going to be okay. Now, if that made sense and helped dispel some of the myths and give some clarity about G59, I'd be very glad. We often find in our experience in the industry that particularly if people come from a mechanical background as opposed to electrical, they find this subject hard to grasp. There's a solution for that, let me show you. Shenton Group, we have a document here. It's available for download from our website and it's, a, if you like, a myth buster. It sets out the issues of G59, some of the challenges, different things that you can and can't do and helps to explain in layman's terms so anybody can grasp it, what's available to you and how it should best be handled. And finally, if all of this is still scary to you, Shenton Group has a service to make a cradle to grave ownership of the whole G59 process to manage it for you. We call it the G59 application process. We'll do everything. We'll liaise with the DNO, provide all the technical information, fill in all the documents, provide the safety device, do all the programming, get the safety test done and get it signed off. It is a truly one-stop solution. I hope that's helped. G59, there it is in a nutshell. Good luck.